Welcome back to the podcast, guys. Hope y'all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be doing an update on Gillian Maxwell once again, specifically having to do with why she was put on suicide watch late last week. If you've been closely monitoring this case like I have, you probably uh, saw the media reports and also Gillian Maxwell's side immediately filed legal papers asking the judge to find out exactly what happened and order the government to resolve the situation as soon as possible. Otherwise, they're going to ask for the sentencing to be moved down. They want to postpone the sentencing because of what happened here. So uh, the Justice Department talked to the prison and the warden and the chief psychologist, and they got answers uh, about exactly what happened here. Basically, there's nothing nefarious going on here. The The prison was worried about Gill and Maxwell's psychology, and that's why they put her uh, in special housing to make sure that that um, she didn't hurt herself. Given what happened to Jeffrey Epstein, I think that's a very, very fine precaution to take. OK, and uh, so let's take a look at what both sides had to say here. So Gil and Maxwell side um, filed this uh, on 25. That was yesterday after we heard about her being put uh, into suicide watch on Friday. OK, and there was a very good reason why the prison did that. Uh, not the, the suicide watch part I'm going to explain, but there's a reason that the prison was worried about her. And that was because of a complaint that Gil and Maxwell herself made. But nevertheless, in Bobby Sternheim's uh, filing, they didn't mention any of that. Uh, I don't know if they were not in contact with Gillian Maxwell, but uh, we found out later exactly why the prison did what they did. So this was their filing yesterday on Saturday. I'm making this video on the 26th on Sunday. They filed this on Saturday asking for the judge um, to look into this situation. I write to inform the court of a recent development which may require postponement of Tuesday's sentencing proceeding. Yesterday, without having conducted a psychological evaluation or without justification, the MDC placed Ms. Maxwell on suicide watch. Now, there's a problem with this sentence here because there, it's true that they didn't do a psychological evaluation immediately, but they did have justification, which I'm going to explain in the second. In a second, when we go over the Justice Department explaining exactly what happened here, but so there's this part is not correct. There was a justification. Uh, they go on to say she is not permitted to possess or review legal documents and is not permitted to uh, paper or pen. Uh, this has prevented her from preparing for sentencing. So this is mostly BS because Gillian Maxwell is not a lawyer and uh, she doesn't need to be involved in any of this stuff. The uh, Bobby Sternheim and the rest of her lawyers, um, uh, Menninger and uh, Palooka, they're the ones who are preparing this. So, uh, you know, defendants uh, routinely see, say this bullshit about how, oh, she's not uh, able to participate in her defense. What is she going to do? <laughs> Gillian Maxwell doesn't even know the difference between a civil and a criminal trial. That's how stupid she is. Okay. She doesn't know anything about American law and jurisprudence, and her lawyers are there to make sure that she's represented. So I understand that this, you know, this is according to her constitutional rights, and she has a right to face her accuser, blah, blah, blah. But her lawyers are the ones who prepare her defense. OK, so I, I hate it when when defendants, not just Gill and Maxwell, but other defendants use this bullshit as if they know the law and if they're preparing legal uh, papers. Right. We all know that the lawyers for the defendants are the ones who are doing it. So I just wanted to rant on that because I find this very annoying. Even if she wasn't able to get this legal documents, which now she is, she's not preparing her defense. Her lawyers are. But anyways, let's keep going. Miss Maxwell was abruptly removed from general population and returned to solitary confinement, this time without any clothing, toothpaste, soap, legal papers, etc. And that is because... That's part of being put on suicide watch is that you're not supposed to have any objects that you can hurt yourself, potentially hurt yourself with. That's why those items are removed. There's nothing uh, mysterious about that. Uh, she was provided a suicide smock, which is like a piece of clothing that you can't possibly kill yourself with. That's what a smock is and is given a few sheets of toilet paper on request. So this is all normal stuff for uh, somebody put on suicide watch. Uh, I met with Miss Maxwell today. Um, I'm guessing she means on the 25th. So on Saturday, they, they met. And that means that she was not being kept away. How were you able to meet her if uh, she was being denied her rights? Right. So the prison provided an opportunity for her to meet with legal counsel, which means that she was not in some, you know, uh, uh, torturous cell uh, where she was not able to see anybody. She, uh, the lawyers were able to meet her. Okay, um, she is not suicidal. 
That's what uh, she claims. Currently, she is unable to properly prepare for sentencing if Ms. Maxwell remains on suicide watch, is prohibited from reviewing legal material prior to sentencing, uh, becomes sleep deprived, and is denied sufficient time to meet with and confer with counsel. We will be formally moving on Monday for an adjournment. Okay, so that's their threat. They're saying that if she's not provided all these things, they will be moving to postpone the sentencing, asking the judge to postpone it. Now, the government responded to this and explained exactly what happened here. Uh, so the Justice Department, the prosecutors talked to what happened here. Uh, this morning, the government spoke directly with the warden and chief psychologist of the MDC. Based on the conversation, the government understands that the defendant currently has access to all of her legal documents in hard copy and is able to confer with defense counsel. And she was able to do so even when she was on suicide watch, as Gillian Maxwell's own lawyers admitted right here when, when they said that they met today. OK, that was on Saturday and they st they were still able to meet even when she was on suicide watch. So she's not being denied uh, access to counsel. And the government confirms that the prison has handed her all of her legal documents. OK, there is no basis to adjourn sentencing because like they explained, everything is now being provided to her. The, the only reason they moved her is because they were worried about her well-being. As they explain here, on Friday, June 24th, the warden of the MDC was informed that the Bureau of Prisons Inspector General's office or the IG's office had received an email direct directly from the defendant, Gillen Maxwell, from within the MDC claiming to be in fear for her safety. So this is the reason. This is the reason, the real reason, the justification, if you will for why they took this action anyways, okay? The prison and the warden and the prison um, prison staff do not take actions like this unless there's some justification for it. So that's why I said that they were wrong when she said that there was no justification. Of course, there was a justification. Gillian Maxwell herself reached out to the IG and, and said that she, her safety was in jeopardy. That's why they took this action. Apparently, the defendant claimed to the IG that she feared MDC staff members were threatening her safety. The warden and the chief uh, psychologist felt obliged to remove the defendant from general population and investigate the defendant's claim about her safety being uh, endangered. Ordinarily, an inmate or, uh, raising such a safety concern will be placed in a single cell of the special housing unit. That's where she used to be before of the MDC. In circumstances where the facility is uh, concerned that the inmate is at heightened risk of self-harm, however, the MDC will instead place the inmate on suicide watch. So, they're going to explain in a second why they thought she was suicidal, but that's basically what happened. So instead of putting her in the ACE HU, which is where she didn't want to be before, if you guys remember, Gillian Maxwell's lawyers complained for like a year straight that she was on special housing. Um, and then finally, they let her out to general population, but they're still not happy. So they're still making excuses and uh, um, raising false alarms. But anyways, uh, they go on to explain why they, uh, why they thought that she was suicidal. The warden and the chief psychologists assess that the defendant is at a heightened risk of self-harm, particularly given her upcoming sentencing and sex offender status. As a result, they were not comfortable placing the defendant in the special housing unit, but they also need to remove the defendant from general population to investigate the threat she uh, reported to the IG. So basically putting her on suicide watch was like a middle ground so they can investigate the report that she made and to secure her from you know, doing anything rash because of her upcoming sentencing and her status of what, what's happened to her so far, right? Because these rich pampered people commit suicide when, when you know, when their situation becomes real to them. Like Jean-Luc Burnell killed himself within the prison. And of course, Jeffrey Epstein as well. Somebody who was not willing to even face trial. He tied up all his accounts and then he hung himself. OK, and they were afraid that Gillian Maxwell would do the same. And that's why she was put on suicide watch to make sure that she was safe. Accordingly, the defendant was placed on suicide watch due to the due to the concerns of the psychologist and the warden. Now, just a couple of things about the rules here. The Justice Department does set the general guidelines and rules uh, for the BOP because the Bureau of Prisons is ultimately operated or at least 
uh, instructed by the Justice Department, but the Justice Department does not run the day-to-day -day operation. The warden and other uh, people that they have uh, empowered, they're the ones who run the prison day-to-day. -day. And given whatever situation might arise, the law allows for the prison warden and other executives uh, under him to do whatever is necessary to keep good order and safety in the prison. So they can put people in su on suicide watch if they believe, if they have a real belief that they are a threat to themselves or others. So the law completely backs up the actions of the warden and the chief, chief psychologist. So there's no way the judge is going to say that the prison did anything wrong. Um, they're asking the judge to postpone this based on what happened here. It's very unlikely that Judge uh, Nathan is going to side with Gil and Maxwell. They're not going to get an adjournment, okay? Because there was a good reason why she was put on suicide watch. All right, let's keep on going here. While she claimed to the IG to be in fear for her safety, she refused to tell psychology staff what that fear is. Given the defendant's inconsistent accounts to the IG and to psychology staff, the chief psychologist assesses the defendant to be at additional risk of self-harm. As it appears, she may be attempting to be transferred to a single cell where she can engage in self-harm. The defendant will remain on suicide watch until the MDC assesses that she is no longer at heightened risk of self-harm. So like I said, the chief psychologist and the warden has the authority to make that assessment, specifically the psychologist. The chief psychologist does get to determine whether they believe that someone is a threat to themselves. And if they believe that to be the case, then they have the right to, in, for the safety of the, the defendant, put them on suicide watch. OK, uh, they go on to say that status will be reevaluated daily, meaning whether she's still suicidal. At the same time, the warden will oversee an investigation into the safety concern that the defendant reported to the IG. So she she said that some guard or some some other um, person working at the MDC was a threat to her. But when asked who that threat was, what that threat was, she refused to tell the psychology staff uh, or the warden who that threat was. So. What can we conclude from that? Maybe there was a threat, but she refused to say what that threat was. So th they can't move on with their investigation until they get to the bottom of the so-called threat. Okay. They go on to say the warden and the chief psychologist have confirmed that the defendant will be able to continue to prepare for sentencing unencumbered. To ensure that the defendant has everything she could possibly need, the MDC staff gathered all papers within the defendant's property, including bins of papers, and put them all in her cell on suicide watch. As a result, the defendant now has all of her legal paperwork with her. If she believes she is missing any items, she can inform the MDC staff. Additionally, the defendant continues to have access to counsel, meaning her lawyer. The defendant had a legal visit yesterday. So they wrote this on the 26th, and Gill and Maxwell's side wrote on the 25th, like I said yesterday, and uh, they were able to visit by their own account. I met with Miss Maxwell today. So she has access to her counsel and all her legal papers. There's absolutely no reason to postpone the, uh, the sentencing that's coming up, and that's what they say here. Given the defendant's continued access to her legal documents and to counsel, there is no reason to adjourn sentencing in this matter. The government respectfully submits that sentencing should proceed as scheduled on June 28, 2022. All right. So that's basically it. Uh, as always, Gil and Maxwell's side is exaggerating something. Uh, there's always a, a reason why uh, a prison takes an action like putting somebody on suicide watch. There's always a justification. They tried to pretend like there was no justification, but of course there was. And the government uh, just explained what the justification was. OK, so there's no way the judge is going to buy her latest excuse and the sentencing most likely will proceed. Ninety nine percent chance that the sentencing will proceed as scheduled because the prison had all the right to take precautions, especially given what ha what happened with Jeffrey Epstein to make sure that uh, Gill and Maxwell makes it to her sentencing. Okay. All right. So that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell and press all for future videos. And if you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon. There'll be a link in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. As always, peace. I'm Enigma Smith, and you're watching the news on Mega City Today. The arts world is mourning the death of Quentin Quayle, who was found dead at his home in Britsit. 
It seems the director was murdered by an assassin who then masqueraded as Quail, taking his place on his trip to the Big Meg. The assassin's true identity was uncovered by Judge Dredd, who executed the killer. Dredd is now recovering in hospital after receiving severe stab wounds. We'll have more on this story at midday. Chief Judge Hershey. Don't get up, Dredd. How's the stomach? Uh, Robo Dogs say I'll be back in the streets tomorrow once the Rappy Heel patches have done their job. Mm, that's good news. Now, Britsit has formally apologized. Mm. Apparently, Erebus used to be one of their own judges, but he went into business for himself. Mm, that explains a lot. The Brits wanted to avoid a diplomatic incident, so they sent Bertram to kill Erebus before he could kill you. <laughs> You say I have to work on my diplomatic skills. <laughs> well, I've got to get back to the halls of justice. You up to seeing another visitor? Depends who it is. Steel, get in here. Yes, ma'am. See you on the streets, Dredd. Hmm.